Okay, we just released the trailer for Tom Clancy's X Defiant. People are kind of, you know, a little mixed about it. Yeah, the comments were pretty bad. I have an idea though, okay? It's kind of controversial. Lay it on me. I'm all ears. We've never done this before. Ooh, you sure about that? Pretty controversial, I know, but I think this is gonna help it sell well. Tom, what the heck? What? How long have you been standing there, Tom? The whole time. Hey, Tom, buddy, it's cool. Hey, look, it was a joke, it was a joke, we can put it back, we can put it back. Yeah, we, we were just joking, it was just a joke. You take my name off? You take my name off? You don't make games without my name on them. It's all good, it's all good. Please don't hurt, please don't hurt me, I'm begging you. Oh, 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 oh. It's Tom Clancy's Ubisoft. Oh my god. <laughs> You're next. Tom, it's cool. We're cool. We're cool. Tom, no, no, Tom. X Defiant is the new free-to-play class-based first-person arcade shooter developed by Ubisoft. Initially, it was going to be Tom Clancy's X Defiant, but thankfully, they made the right decision and made a game without Tommy for once. Get out of here, Tommy! It's also because they didn't want to limit themselves to just Tom Clancy characters, because the classes are all designed after Ubisoft games, like Far Cry, Ghost Recon, Watch Dogs, The Division, and Splinter Cell. So it's more like Ubisoft All-Stars, or Super Ubisoft Bros. It's truly the first FPS crossover nobody knew they needed. So in that same vein, the maps are all designed after Ubisoft games as well. Fans of these games will probably recognize a couple of these maps and be like, huh, that's neat. So there's no cohesive story or lore behind it. You just go in and shoot up the place. Games don't have to be that deep, you know? So you may be wondering, what sets this game apart from other arcade shooters? Well, let's go over that, starting with the... At the moment, there's five game modes, and these modes are nothing new. There's Escort, which is like any other payload objective, you push the Boston Dynamics looking robot to the end. Or if it gets stopped, it just kind of gives up on life. It's kind of sad. Then there's Zone Control, where one team has to capture points while the other team defends it. It's like if 2CP was still a thing in Overwatch. You remember how much people love that game mode, right? <clears throat> Both Escort and Zone Control are played on maps exclusively built for these two game modes, as they're the kind of maps that open up more as you progress like in Overwatch. For the next three game modes, they're played on entirely different arena maps that are more similar in design to Call of Duty. Trust me, the Call of Duty comparisons are gonna keep happening, so just get used to it. The next game mode is Domination. Come on, it's Domination? I don't gotta explain this. There's Occupy, which is essentially hard point from Call of Duty. Just hold the point as long as possible until it moves. Rinse and repeat. And there's an experimental mode called Hotshot. It's basically kill confirmed, except instead of dog tags, it's these coins, and whoever collected the most coins without dying becomes the hotshot. The hotshot can be seen through walls, but it's super fast. When you're the hotshot, every time you collect a coin, it gives you three points instead of one point. So the longer you last, the faster you win. This twist to Kill Confirmed was super fun to play and added a mini objective to focus on, either killing the enemy hotshot or protecting your teammate hotshot, or you're the hotshot and you just zooming around, you know? It's awesome. There's an unranked mode where you can play anything you want, 6v6, and a ranked mode, which is 4v4, and only escort and zone control. I don't know how I feel about Ranked since it was a bit scuffed during this beta, but hopefully it gets better and includes more modes than just these two. There's also a practice zone to try out the factions and weapons, and even try and break the record on the time trial. And not to toot my own horn, but I think I did pretty fast. So like I said earlier, this is a class-based shooter, so we gotta talk about... At the moment, there are only five factions. Each faction has two choices for tactical abilities, a passive ability, and an ultimate, which can be earned by getting kills, assists, or playing the objective. The first faction you got is the Cleaners, inspired by the Division. Their passive gives their bullets burn damage that deal extra damage over time at the cost of lowering their range. Their tactical is either a Molotov cocktail that you throw on yourself and instantly kill anyone near you, or their other tactical is a fire drone that you can throw in a linear path burning the floor beneath it and exploding whatever it impacts. Their ultimate is a flamethrower. It has a deceptively long range and instant kills anyone in its path. It's kind of nuts. I got us some healies. They're burned. Oh, they're on fire. These, all three of them. 
That was three in a row, dude! The next faction is the Phantoms, inspired by Ghost Recon Phantoms. Their passive ability gives them more health. Their tactical is a riot shield that blocks damage and whatnot, or a mag barrier, which is like a Reinhardt barrier, where you can shoot through it, but your enemies can't. Their ultimate is the Bubble Boy. You have a Winston bubble that surrounds you, and you also have a scatter gun that instantly kills anybody that tries to come into your bubble. It is so broken for holding down a point, but people can just kind of walk through your bubble, so be aware of that. Then there's Libertad, inspired by Far Cry 6. They don't have a passive, but they make up for it with two broken tacticals. Biovita Boost, which instantly overheals you to 125 health, even if you were at 1 health. Or you have El Remedio, a device that constantly heals you and your team in its radius until it's destroyed. Their ultimate is Medico Supremo, which makes you and anyone near you go up to 200 health for a short time. You are seriously impossible to kill with this ultimate. It's nuts. Then there's Echelon, inspired by Splinter Cell. Their passive makes it so they never appear on a minimap ever. Their tacticals either let them go invisible for a while or until they shoot. Their other tactical is a sonar pulse that scans all around you in a small radius. Their ultimate is sonar goggles, which gives you wall hacks and a pistol that either two taps the body or instant kills on a headshot. It's like a 007 golden gun. Then there's DeadSec, inspired by Watch Dogs 2. They can hack into other people's equipment and make them theirs, like enemy barriers and enemy heals. Or they have a spider bot that will look for an enemy and then stun them, allowing you to swoop in for the kill. Uh, we stand the spider. <laughs> Their ultimate is Lockout. It stops enemies from using their abilities in his area of effect, like a somber EMP that lasts a while. There's no roll lock, so your team can have a lot of overlapping characters and abilities, but people will mostly run Libertad because she's kind of busted right now. Everybody's using the healer character. Everyone knows that Libertad at this point is definitely the most busted character. Like Call of Duty, you can create a class. You got SMGs, assault rifles, snipers, shotguns, marksman rifles, and LMGs. Each gun has their use, with pros and cons. So eventually, you'll find your favorite, like mine's the P90. And you'll find guns you don't like, like LMGs. I mean, by the time I'm finally done reloading, boom, I'm dead. Stupid gun. You'll have to earn and unlock weapons, and their attachments over time. Just like Cockadoodle. And there's even challenges to unlock cool weapon skins, and eventually get a gold gun. But this is a free-to-play game, so it will need to make money. Money, which it will with weapon skins, faction skins, etc, etc. You know, the typical free-to-play way. So that's X Defiant in a nutshell. It's a class-based Call of Duty with Ubisoft IP. But I know you want me to tell you what I honestly think about it, so I will. But I will also be talking about some things that this game should do to improve, because it is still in its beta. And who knows, maybe Ubisoft is listening. You're listening, Ubisoft? Come, come closer. Give me a little kiss. So without further ado... The gunplay feels smooth. I know I keep comparing it to Cockadoodle Doo, but it's like COD's gunplay, but better. There's somewhat of a balance between the weapons, and you'll definitely be running a bunch of different loadouts for sure. The factions are also very distinct in their gameplay and design. They even have separate voices narrating the game depending on the faction. It's a nice touch. Seriously, I love that it's all of Ubisoft's IP under one roof, and I hope we see even more. Maybe an Assassin's Creed character? A Rainbow Six Siege character? A Hyperscape character? A Just Dance? character? Hmm? A rabbit's character? <laughs> Imagine. The movement in this game also feels very fluid without being really annoying to deal with. I mean, you're gonna see people running around trying to move and they look kind of stupid. There will always be people doing ridiculous movements in these cockadoodle doodle doodle games, you know what I mean? But forget about those guys. In general, the movement does feel really clean. I'm telling you, the children, they yearn for Titanfall. The maps are also very well made. Aesthetically, they are super unique. There's literally a Google HQ map called Noodle. It's awesome. They flow decently well without creating campy scenarios. Although some maps can cause spawn camps to happen, but hopefully they can fix that. Most of the game modes are really fun, and the changes that they made to them so there aren't just a carbon copy of COD, like Hotshot, mwah! is a nice touch. The devs have been super responsive online and have updated and fixed things very quickly, which gives me a ton of hope for the success of this game. But we gotta talk about... The UI is bland. Ubisoft's UI isn't usually anything amazing. I mean, look at Siege. But I hope there's just a more pleasing layout with variety in color and look to better match the all over the place style of the game. In my opinion, Ubisoft should ditch the factions entirely and go all in on individual characters instead. Games like Overwatch, Apex, and Valorant all succeeded because people got attached to the design and lore of an individual character. But by making them a group, it's just harder to attach yourself to that individual character 
character. And from a business perspective, people would be more willing to buy skins for their favorite character, not for their favorite faction. It's really not even that hard for them to do. They've already created these unique characters. Just trim out the ones that aren't as cool. Boom, one character. So by the time the game officially comes out, you have five individual named characters. Trust me, Ubisoft, it works. You guys know this. Look at the success of Siege. The netcode is pretty bad. If they fix the online issues and make it so servers are stable, this game would be near perfect on the gameplay side. I say near perfect because they got to balance these factions. Libertad is unkillable. It's not fun fighting six dudes with instant heals. Come on, Ubisoft. What were you thinking? The game is also full of bugs and glitches. Some that just look funny and others that can be game breaking. On stream, I had a glitch where the noise just refused to go away. Not that good. Captures don't contest it. I've been flashbang so hard that I'm hearing the flashbang noise still. That. I just feel like. Oh! If I hold the select button long enough, the noise goes away. Also, the melee feels terrible. It's almost better to just not use it. But I hope they can make it feel better because sometimes you just want to melee your enemy. Come on. Also, they gotta fully commit and add even more game modes. We know which one I want. Give us search and destroy. Please, this game was built for it. Oh my god. Overall, X Defiant has some potential to be a true competitor to call my booty, but Ubisoft will need to really polish this game upon its release. If it can fix the many issues it has and even change some stuff like I suggested, I think we might have a threat on our hands. So I will be giving X Defiant an 8 out of 10. But what do you think? Have you played it? And if so, what would you rate it? Are you hyped for it to come out eventually? I don't know when because I'm not Ubisoft. I'm sorry about that. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, guys, I got to go before Tom finds me. So uh, I'll catch you later. Ya noob.